In Boris FX's Continuum 2023.5, we've now added Beat Reactor to over 20 BCC Plus effects. Let's become familiar with the workflow in this video. So Beat Reactor has been around for a while, but now it's been added to these BCC Plus effects, including Super LED, Chromatic Aberration, Video Glitch, and Prism, to name a few. What it allows us to do is use audio to drive how properties react under a given effect. Let's hop inside of After Effects as well as Premiere to get familiar with how we can activate Beat Reactor in these new effects. All right, so I'm here inside of After Effects and I have Video Glitch applied to this clip inside my composition as well as an audio source inside of it. First of all, with the audio, I'm just gonna press LL to reveal its waveform and then press the space bar. We can hear that the audio source is a glitch. Instead of having the video glitch work independently and not be affected by these audio waveforms, we wanna connect the two. In order to do that, at the top of this effect is a beat reactor section. And the first thing we need to do is enable beat reactor. Since we're inside of After Effects, we can choose the audio input from directly in the timeline that we wish to work with. Inside of Premiere, we'll have to choose an outside audio source, which we'll get to in a second. So I'm just gonna identify that glitch waveform inside my timeline. And I can see here that I now have a spectrum graph that consists of 32 bands. If I'd like to switch this in Beat Reactor, there's an audio spectrum option section where we can change the frequency resolution from 32 to something much greater like 1024, where we have a much more smooth graph. I'll turn this back to 32, scroll back up, and let's identify a parameter that we want to work with. Where it says unused next to apply parameter A, I'll change that from unused. In this case, let's go for the overall glitch intensity. Automatically, what is currently being selected in terms of frequencies happens to be within this box. And you can see that by twirling down the audio apply options A and looking at the sampler, which is set to box percentage. We can use the on-screen controls in After Effects to identify which frequencies we want to drive this property. So I'll take this and just have this over these two red lines. And if I draw your attention to the right-hand side here, this is our actual output. I'll use the command key to scrub the After Effects composition as well as hear the audio. I'm also paying attention to the output here. And based on that, I might wanna make an adjustment of the impact that it has on the output. Now that I've modified that selection, I'm gonna go up to the top of Beat Reactor where it says show graph and choose to change this to no so we could just see the glitch effect. And I'll move my playhead back to the beginning of the timeline and let's press the space bar to play back and see how this glitch is driven from the audio source. One other thing to note about the audio apply options under any driven parameter is what happens after the audio acts on a certain property. This is what I refer to as the fall off. One thing that we wanna pay attention to is what happens after the audio has driven this property, meaning does it just go back down to no glitch effect at all, or does it slowly ramp down versus have an immediate release. This can actually be controlled in the fall off section. So if we go to fall off where it says unused, let's change that to quadratic soft. And what will happen is rather than an immediate release of the glitch, it will slowly go down in intensity versus be let go right away. So we can use that fall off to decide how we taper off a given effect driven by the audio source. Now, another thing to note with Beat Reactor is if I close out my audio apply options A section, we can actually drive up to three properties in any given BCC plus effect that has Beat Reactor. 
So if I go to the Audio Apply Options B, and first of all, just choose a parameter under the Apply Parameter B section. Let me set this to Shake Intensity. If I turn back on the graph to show it to yes, we now have a second box that we can choose other frequencies in, or in fact, match our previous frequencies selected. But in this case, I'll just choose these yellow frequencies right here to act as my second output. And notice that on the right-hand side of the screen, I now have a second output here, identifying the second box that I've selected. And see how the image now shakes because of that output value. Now I wanna increase the size of this box just so it's a bit bigger and there's a bit less of an output. And note that right now, Beat Reactor is adding to the value of what shake is set to. We can see that here under effect on parameter, it's gonna to add to the shake value, but we can have it subtract from the shake value if we wanted it to take away from the intensity based on the audio. And that value is gonna be determined in the shake section. So if you scroll down to the bottom of the video glitch effect, just notice that shake is enabled. And if we reveal the shake properties, we can see there a shake amount set to 500. So it's gonna be adding to this value whatever the glitch sound hits. Let's take a look at another example inside of Premiere Pro. Okay, I'm here inside of Premiere Pro, and what I'm gonna do is apply BCC plus Prism from the BCC stylized category onto the clip in my timeline. Let's go to effect controls. And one thing to note is that with Beat Reactor inside of Premiere Pro or Avid Media Composer or Final Cut Pro, we have to choose an audio source outside of our project. So something that exists on our desktop or maybe in our downloads folder. What I've done is while I do have an audio source here in my Premiere Pro timeline, I exported this out ahead of time, and then we're gonna use that as the reference inside of Beat Reactor. So let's just see what we're working with. Look, I don't wanna talk. Excellent. And we want this audio to drive the global weight of this prismatic effect. And just so you see it's working, I'm gonna click the effects badge to turn it off and on. So like we did in After Effects, I'm gonna head into the Beat Reactor section, click Enable, and now choose, in this case I could choose an AIF or a waveform file from my system. Here's the AIF file I want, which happens to be a direct match to what's inside my timeline. I'll choose Open, and voila, we get the Beat Reactor graph. Now, let's choose a property to effect. So under the Apply Parameter A, I'll change this value to global transform. And in order to make an on-screen change here in the program monitor, I'll select BCC Prism by its name, and now use the on-screen controls to select the frequencies in the lower part of this graph. So these first three here, and let's move this to the beginning of the timeline and just preview what we have here. Look, I don't want to talk. How you try and press the kid and read We can see how much that global transform value is affected by Beat Reactor. Let's add another property into the mix. Under Apply Parameter B, I'm going to choose Scale Start. And automatically, we're going to see a huge impact because even making a subtle change to the scale start in Prism has a pretty large impact on the overall look of the effect. For instance, let me just turn off the apply parameter B for a second to unused. Scroll down here and let's just scrub that scale start parameter. So you just notice small incremental changes and that growing further away from the scale end has a dramatic impact on the look of the Prism. Press Command Z to undo. I'll scroll to the top of the effect knowing this, and let's choose the scale start again. We get a second box where we can pick some frequencies. In this case, just looking at the frequencies, I wanna pick some yellow bands, yellow orange bands. So I'll choose these ones right here. Now paying attention to my second output on the far right-hand side, I'll just make sure that I encompass the entire graph in its highest hits. That's looking pretty good. 
but we still have this dramatic change happening with the scale start. Under the audio apply options B, scroll down. What we're gonna do is play with the output max value. So what you wanna know is that when we get to the highest point in our frequency based on the output, the scale start is gonna to get to its highest point as well, which is quite dramatic compared to the scale end. We're gonna bring down this output max to be a really low value. Let's just set this to something like four. There'll only be a output max of four added to the existing value of the scale right now, so it's a way less dramatic effect. In fact, we could bring this down even further. I'll set this to two. Let's now see the result of this by going to the beginning of the timeline. I'll just press control tilde to do a full screen playback with our graph. Look, I don't want to talk. How you try and press the Even with that small maximum output defined, we have quite a large response there with our prism effect. Last but not least, I'll head up here to the show graph, which I'll set to no. We could preview this effect one more time in full without that graph showing. Look, I don't want to talk. How you try and press the kid and read you. Like we did in the previous example, don't forget that we can play around with the fall off. So I'll set this to quadratic soft for both apply options B as well as the apply options A so that we don't have an immediate fall off. And last but not least, just note that you can actually have a slight delay when the actual properties become affected by the audio, depending on the type of feel that you want. So that's it. That is how Beat Reactor works in BCC Plus Effects. Give it a try in one of the 20 effects that we've added it to today. For more tips and tricks just like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and download a trial at BorisEffects.com.